Hey everyone, basically I wanted to make a really clear cut video on my personal experience of a catheter ablation. Um, just wanted to just communicate with people out there who are either thinking about having a catheter ablation or know someone who is debating whether or not to have a catheter ablation. Um, I'll start off just by saying that my experience was totally positive. I am so lucky and so thankful. Um, so basically I had, it's very exciting to say, had a condition called SVT where the heart would beat extremely fast, like double, triple, quadruple sometimes, uh, what a regular heart would be. Um, my heart um, did get up to about 240 beats per minute, which was pretty damn scary. Um, it feels like it's jumping out of your chest. It's, it's really horrible. Um, it's hard to breathe and it's happening and it's not fatal. They say you're unlikely to die from it, but if it keeps going on for longer than say, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, it's starting to release chemicals that do start to do bad things to the heart slowly over time and also it's very unpleasant and when it's going that fast it's just dangerous to have your heart going that fast and they can't really say what it could do. I mean in some people it could stop but it's unlikely with SVT because it comes from the atrium not the ventricles which means that it doesn't block the blood flow but it it does make it hard to breathe and I did get fuzzy hands and legs and things because the blood wasn't flowing around well enough because the heart was beating much too fast. Um, so I had these tacks since I was 16, I'm 20 now. Um, I was getting them and they'd last about 10 minutes but then um, towards, oh, towards the end there, like before the operation, I was getting ones that would just not stop, like they would just go on and on and on and on. Like, um, I had one going for half an hour at 200 and it was so scary and that's when mum ended up having to call the ambulance because she used to know what was going on and that's when I went to the hospital and they said look you've got SVT and they gave me this the horrible adenosine drug that makes you feel like you're dying and um, had to give that to me a couple of times and then I um, just last year I was rushed to the emergency room with a really severe attack again and I had to have it again and they gave it to me four times because they, it wasn't slowing down enough and oof, it's just, it's just a terrible experience all over and it, it was causing me to get quite severe anxiety. You're constantly thinking, when am I going to have an attack? What if I have an attack here? You know, I can't, I don't want to go camping. What if I have an attack? I can't, you know, the ambulance won't make it in time. Something really bad could happen. Um, it's going to be too scary or I'd be driving thinking, have I got my phone? Is my phone working? Have I got enough battery? Because I could be having to call an ambulance any minute. You know, it sounds extreme, but that, that was the reality of it. I mean, it, it was dangerous you know, to be uncontactable. You needed to be able to, you know, be near a hospital and I just felt my life was limited. I was scared of flying. Um, I actually did fly overseas just after having um, my first severe, severe attack and I was terrified. I was thinking, oh god, if it happens on the plane, what, then what will happen? You know, it was, oh, I just wouldn't do that again. It was, oh, it was, anyway, so, um, after the second hospitalisation with the adenosine, I decided, okay, this is it, I'm going to see the cardiologist. I went to see him, he said, do you want this fixed? And I was like, well, you're crazy, of course I want it fixed. But um, you know, I was a little bit scared of what that might entail. Um, he told me it's a fairly simple procedure, they do about four a week. Um, you go up through uh, a vein in your leg, go to the heart with catheters, uh, they put adrenaline into the heart, set off an attack, um, or induce an attack. Um, they find out where the abnormal cluster of cells is, where the heart short circuiting itself. Um, burn those cells off, and if they get all the cells, and the cells are in an easy spot to get to, then, you know, you're fixed. And I said, okay, will you refer me on to the surgeon, and he's an electrophysiologist, I think, the surgeon. Uh, he took a few months to get into, got into him. Um, he said that the severity of my case warranted an operation. Um, he thought that it would change my life and to go ahead with it. So, yeah, I, I thought about it. I didn't answer him that day. I was still, yeah, pretty scared at that stage. Um, 
and he told me the, there are risks of heart attack, um, stroke, death, which was apparently an extremely rare one that might have happened once or twice in like who knows what country. Um, and uh, the real risk, one in 200, was a permanent pacemaker, which may have to be um, put in your heart during the procedure if, and kept in there if it, the cluster of cells is too close to the beating centre and they have to make a hole in the heart. So they were the risks. Um, he'd never seen anyone have a heart attack or a stroke, um, let alone die. Um, so he kind of said to me, realistically, then you, you don't have to worry about those really. Uh, it was the pacemaker that was, you know, pretty nerve-wracking. Um, I said I'd think about it. Um, that afternoon, a new neighbour who had just moved in um, saw me out the front and said, I saw you at the cardiologist today. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah, I work with that cardiologist. Um, I make pacemakers for him. And I was like, wow, okay, that's a coincidence. And I explained what I was there for and everything. And he said, go ahead with it. He said, I'm not kidding. You'll never regret it. He said, it's it's the best decision you can make. This cardiologist is, um, you know, very well respected and it's a fairly simple procedure and you just, you won't regret it. So that kind of swayed me quite a lot. I think deep down, I really just wanted to do it and just get on with my life. But after he spoke to me, I was like, that's it. I'm going to do it. Um, I booked it in. Wasn't too scary. I was scared beforehand. Um, you know, I kept reading over the risks and it's scary, you know, this young having a heart operation. And then um, just before, I had a bit of a cry just the weekend before um, and just kind of let it out a bit. And then um, just before, oh, well, I went in and I went in at 8.30 in the morning. Didn't end up getting done until 5.30 in the afternoon. Um, the, it wasn't expected that I'd have to wait that long, but you know some of the other operations had more complications, so fair enough. Um, went in, um, they put a drip in, they put a cannula in your arm, which hurts. Um, but I had an anesthetic, <laughs> I can never say this word, anesthetist there with me, so um, he looked after you know the pain side of things. So I had that put in the wrist, drip in the arm defibrillator pads put on. Oh, right, what's that for? Just in case your heart stops during the operation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but they do have to be careful. So, yeah, that was kind of scary getting those put on. I remember being placed on the really hard operating table and that was pretty traumatic. I was like, oh God, here we go. And they, all the surgeons had shower caps on and it was, you know, this is the real deal. And um, it was scary. And, and they said I'd be awake during the procedure, like twilight. Um, conscious sedation but luckily I don't remember the procedure because they gave me amnesia drugs which was quite nice of them because I don't want to remember the procedure um uh, yes and I remember one bit of the procedure I woke up but all I could see was black well I think all I could see was black and I remember saying oh oh my heart's beating really fast I think I'm in an SVT which obviously they knew that they were trying to induce that but you know in my dopey state I, I said that and um the next thing I know I was being wheeled out saying Oh, that was so relaxing, and the nurses were all laughing, saying, I want what she had. <laughs> so, yeah, and the sight at the leg, um, they had to check on that every half hour or so, and no problems there, no bleeding or anything. It, it was all good, and um, just a little bit sore the next couple of days, but no big deal. Um, so, yeah, I would strongly advise anyone, if you trust your surgeon, and find a surgeon that you do trust, that's so important, go ahead with it. It'll change your life. It's changed my life, and... I still get um, missed heartbeats every now and then, if you know what that's like. It's like, boom, like your heart just kind of skips a beat. Um, they said that's nothing to worry about, it just happens in some people, and my heart tends to palpitate a little bit when I drink alcohol, not an attack, but just like speeds up. Um, apparently that also happens in some people, um, so don't really know what's going on there, but haven't had any attacks since, and I'm feeling good, so yeah, I'd strongly advise you go ahead with it if you're thinking about it. Um, Anyway, that's just my um, experience.